Hi, it's Corrine for Wild Orchid Crafts and Knitwood Collections, and today I have a fun start to finish project with you, which I will play in just a moment. I used an old iPhone mini um, box. I love their boxes because number one, they're really sturdy, and it's also white, which I like, so I don't have to paint the box. And I made a mini album to go inside of it. I used all these gorgeous products as you can see from Wild Orchid Crafts. I'll be sure to list them down in the description box as well as over on my blog. So check out Wild Orchid Crafts. They have amazing products. And I also used a new brand new collection from Knitwit Collections, a beautiful digital collection called Friendship. And if you've never worked with digital before, I love using digital because you can use it over and over as many times for as many different projects as you want and it's very simple to use. If you have a printer, you can use it. I do have a video that goes into more detail about how I use digital products. I'll be sure to link that down in the description box, but it's very simple to work with. I also use my Cameo with it, but you don't have to use a digital cutting machine. You can simply print stuff out, cut them out by hand, or you can have your digital die cutting machine cut them for you. So whatever works for you, it's very easy to work with and this is an absolutely stunning collection so this box I believe measures eight and a half eight and a half by about six and again it's an old iPad mini box that I repurposed and re upcycled it on the front here I use this beautiful stamp this is an element that comes in the digital collection from Knitwit Collections, The Friendship. It says, one friend can change your whole life. And look at this beautiful imagery on there. It has shadowing in it. The colors are just stunning. So I printed out one of these. I backed it with a couple layers of chipboard because I wanted it dimensional. And then I gave myself a shadow in white. I just uh, made a larger layer in white for it to sit on. And then gorgeous flowers and products from Wild Orchid Crafts. I use these large trellis roses in yellow that went perfectly with this collection. I also added some cottage roses in pink. I added the white and pink open roses. I used some hip rosebuds. Those are some of my absolute favorite. Some open roses here, some more hip rosebuds. And then I used a couple of these pearls, these flat back pearls. Again, all of this will be listed in the description box here as well. One here also. And then some of my favorite thing to use on any projects is their flat back glitter balls. So there's one there, there, and down here as well, tucked under. I also added a few of the translucent Nouveau glitter drops to the front absolutely beautiful. On the side here I used this little door pull that I had, added some um, pearls to the center, this gorgeous damask paper that comes in the collection, and you can buy just one part of the collection or you can buy the bundled collection. If you buy the bundled collection from Knitwood Collections it saves you 20 percent as opposed to buying each individual um, element of it. And with the bundled collection, you get everything in it. You get all the solid papers, the uh, pattern papers, and then the, all the elements that come with it, which there's a lot. So here's the inside. Love this paper. And again, the box was white, so I didn't have to paint it. I love using these boxes. Here is the little album. I used my cinch to bind it. And here's the inside. Again, look at that paper. I did put on the edge this... Um, rose trimming. It's a rosette trimming. I put that all around the edge for it to sit in. And here's my little album. This was quick to come together. I did five pages, chipboard pages, and I made it five by six and three quarters. Again, I did bind it with the cinch using a five eighth inch um, binding rings. This is a gorgeous element that comes just like this clustered already from the Knitwit collections. I added three or four layers and I also gave myself a very slight white border so it would stand out against this paper. And I put it on chipboard as well so it has some dimension to it. Added some of the translucent Nouveau crystal drops and then this beautiful label. It says Amazing Memories. It's 
So let me flip through quickly for you. On this side, I used a Martha Stewart scallop edge punch and made a little pocket using some of the gorgeous little journaling cards that come in it. Perfect to add little photos to this. And those will tuck right in the pocket here. Here, this is another element. I cut out two of them, backed them to each other so it was um, finished on both the front and back and then added it to the singe. Added one of these beautiful yellow flowers here. I added one of their paint chips. These are some of my favorite to add. It's their little sample paint chips with some other papers on it. It says best friends bring out the best in you. Again, backed it with this gorgeous paper. And this paper, this is one of the things I like about digital. It actually comes on the left-hand side. I just flipped it around, which you could also just add it into your book flipped around, but I made it, I scaled it a little bit larger and put it to the right so a perfect little photo can at, be added right here. Another little pocket on this side with one of the tags that come in the collection. I added a bow to it and a gorgeous flat back ivory heart pearl from Wild Orchid Crafts. So this is perfect to add a little journaling to. Another little postage stamp. Gorgeous imagery. And there's so much more that I didn't even use that comes in the collection. So you can make projects like cards and mini albums, scrapbook pages, whatever you like to do. And there's so much to choose from. On this side, I added a stamp that says always and forever and no matter what that I had in my stash. Gorgeous paper. This one is a digital stamp that comes with their elements and I added it to this paper. It says best friends are so hard to find since the very best is already mine. I love this. All the things I love about you. Little journaling spot. Gorgeous, gorgeous flowers in this. Again, another element that already comes like this. It says my darling friend. Same with this little chipboard piece here. It's an element. I, I doubled it on cardstock so it makes it a thick board, or excuse me, a thicker chipboard like element. Gorgeous paper. Love this paper. This was my favorite in the collection. As you can see, I used it on the cover. I just scaled it down so it makes it look, look like a little bit different of a pattern. You can make it as large as you want or as small as you want. And so I, this is the regular size and for the cover, I scaled it up slightly. On this side, it says one friend can change your whole life. Another element that already comes put together, I added some pearls from Wild Orchid Crafts. And these are some photo corners here that I added and another journaling card. And here's another example. This is the same journaling card and I originally printed it out this size, but I decided I wanted to add it as a piece in the album. So I scaled it larger and added it to the album, but I didn't want to get rid of this. So I tucked it in a pocket. But as you can see, that's one of the many reasons I love digital. I can customize it to whatever I want to use it for. So I made it larger to fit in the album itself. So perfect for journaling, a little photo, a little photo can be tucked in here. Another side pocket here with a tag that comes in the collection. I added another bow with a flat back pearl, another little journaling card, looks like a postcard. So super pretty. On this side, another journaling card. It says best friend always makes you laugh a little harder, smile a little brighter and live a little better. Gorgeous cluster. On this I added um, the digital stamp to this side. It says the good things in life are better with you. And then this flower cluster comes already made for you. She also has separate flowers in it so you can cluster it however you want or they come already put together for you. So I did a couple layers of this to make it thick so I could tuck in a um, little postcard on the side here, or a little journaling card, I should say. And then here is th this gorgeous paper again. Perfect to add a little photo to the back of this or in here. And that just tucks right in there. And look at that beautiful imagery. I love it. She thinks of everything. <laughs> So paired with the gorgeous Wild Orchid craft products, it makes any project just that much prettier. 
So if you have any questions, please leave me a comment. I hope you stay tuned for the quick start to finish on it. And please check out both Wild Orchid Crafts and Knitwood Collections for all their amazing products. Thanks so much for watching. Oh, and before I forget to mention, Knitwit Collections was generous enough to offer a coupon code that I'll have the information down in the description box. So check that out for the expiration date on that and how you can claim that code. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy. So I'm starting off with this box that I had and I love that it's a really sturdy box and it's white so I didn't have to paint it. So I just cut down my chipboard to fit inside which is six and three quarters by five. And here's all my papers pre-cut. I've printed them out, cut them out, and I do spray them with a fixative. It's not something you have to do, but it does help to seal the papers. I either use Krylon mats or Krylon Preserve It or Mod Podge. And I also am showing you that I cut out quite a few of the elements just to prepare ahead of time. I went around all the edges of my chipboard with some distress paint just because you will see it slightly. So I just didn't, I wanted to tone down that chipboard color. And I'm doing one on camera. The rest I've already prepared off camera. I cut out five pieces of chipboard and they are dry already. So I'm going to get a piece of scrap paper to lay under it and go ahead and glue on my papers. I'm just kind of going through them and deciding which ones I want um, for my front cover and next to each other and so forth. So I'm using some Fabri-Tac and making sure I go around all the edges and then I, I'm, I'm not shy with my glue. I like to make sure that my project is not going to fall apart. So I add quite a bit of glue throughout, but I'm making sure that I went around all the edges. And then I really press it down. I use a brayer to make sure that it's pressed down very well. And the Fabri-Tac dries very quickly. So I go ahead and continue to do that with the rest of them. I did that off camera and I placed them in the order that I want them to go as far as my book. I'm using some 5 8 inch binder rings by We Are Memory Keepers. And I'm going to pull out my cinch measure it out and punch my holes. Very easy to use. It has a guide right there that you can see at the bottom and it tells you which pegs to pull out depending on what size you're using. So my, the width of my book is five inches. So I just went ahead and pulled out the pegs that it says not to use and it gives me perfect placement every time. I'm going to figure out how many of the wire binding or how, how long I need it to be, cut it off. And now I'm going to add some elements and some journaling cards that I want inside the book. So I'm just going to punch the holes for those as well. I don't show you all of it on camera because it's a little redundant, but I'm just basically placing the holes in it. And just to elaborate a little bit on the Mod Podge spray or whatever type of spray, if you get, after you spray it, you want to spray it outside in a well-ventilated area. And I usually give it two coats. I spray it, let it sit for about five minutes, and then spray it again. And again, you can use any type of fixative that you want. Mod Podge, um, Krylon are usually the two that I buy, and they're about three or four dollars per can, and it lasts quite a bit. You can also brush on Mod Podge if you prefer to do that, but the spray is so easy to use. So I just spray it, and then if you were to get glue on it, you can erase it off, you can wipe it off, and it doesn't affect the papers. Now, if you were going to spill a drink or water on it, it's still going to ruin the papers, just like it would regular papers from a paper pack. It's, if you were to spill something on it, it's not going to do well, but the spray, the fixative will help protect it. So now I'm using a Martha Stewart punch. It's a lacy scallop punch and I cut pockets to fit. I think I did three of them again, using my Fabri-Tac, adding it to the two sides in the bottom. This will allow for a little pocket to add photos and journaling cards too. This entire album came together very quickly. I think maybe two and a half hours for everything, printing everything out, cutting it out. 
I think I did it in two sittings. So I printed all my papers out, cut them out one day, and then I sat down to put this all together and it really did not take me long. And I'm using a beautiful little um, journaling card there, added some Wild Orchid Craft flatback pearls to the sides. I'm going to add another pocket on the right side here. And here's the last pocket that I add. And now I'm just tucking in the little journaling cards that I had prepared ahead of time. Here's a few more that I wanted to add to the pockets. These little tags come in the um, paper collection and I did have my cameo cut them out. You can easily cut them by hand as well. I added a few bows that I had cut out and some, I added a pearl to the center of one and one of the ivory heart embellishments from Wild Orchid Crafts to the other one. Those are some of my favorite elements. And I'm using a little bit of E6000 and glossy accents to adhere that down. And I used a clip to hold them together to give it time to dry. My hot glue gun, I, I was heating it up at the time, so it wasn't ready. Normally I would use the hot glue along with a little E6000. I'm adding this beautiful little flower cluster. I did back that with some heavyweight cardstock because I wanted to use it as a type of pocket, so I wanted to make sure it was sturdy. Just gorgeous imagery there, gorgeous colors. And I get asked all the time what type of printer I use. I just use, my printer is a very basic printer, but I love the way it prints out. I, I do print on high resolution and one of the decisions I made when I was buying my printer is what the ink replacement cost would be. It's not expensive for me at all. And that was one of the decisions I made with buying my printer. I'll put a um, the name of the printer I use in the description box. I don't believe that they make it anymore, but they do make something similar. I just use a Canon Pigsma 512 printer. I think it was about $100. And um, the ink replacement is about $45 for both black and color for me. And I can do a lot of mini albums and scrapbook pages before I have to replace my ink. And we also use it for home purposes as well. So it really goes a long way. So now I'm adding this gorgeous element that comes in the collection. And I did make a mat for it, a white mat to match it because I wanted it to stand out. This is going to be for the front of the box and I'm adding two layers of chipboard because I wanted it to have some dimension to it. Again, just using Fabri-Tac to adhere everything down. I use this or hot glue, but like I said, I was waiting for my hot glue gun to heat up at this point. So I'm going to set that aside and let that dry for a moment and start adding the papers to my box. Again, making sure I go around all the edges and I sealed these papers as well with spray. I'm just quickly going through this, adhering all the insides. I did not put paper on the bottom portion of the box on the sides because it's a tight fitting box when you open and close it. So it probably wouldn't even have closed if I added papers to those edges. So I only added papers to the top portion of the box on the edge to finish it off. But that's what I liked about this box is it was white. I didn't have to worry about that. I didn't feel like it needed papers. That's my favorite paper out of this collection. Absolutely beautiful. I scaled it up so it was a little bit, the images were a little bit larger for the outside of the box. And now I'm using some rosette trimming that I had and I cut it to size to fit all on the inside of the box just to make it look pretty. There was no purpose in it besides aesthetics to make it look pretty. So 
So I'm being very liberal with the Fabri-Tac and adhering those down. And now for the cover of my book, I wanted to keep it simple and use this focal piece. It's a beautiful cluster of the flowers already put together for you. So I cut out a few layers. Again, I wanted to give it dimension. And then as you can see, I added chipboard to the entire back. I also cut out a very slight white border so it would stand off the page. And now I'm adding a beautiful label. It says Amazing Memories right to the front of that. And I want, like I said, I wanted to keep the cover very simple. I'm looking through the translucent, the jewel drops, the Nouveau jewel drops, trying to decide which colors I liked for this album. And I added, I believe, just one color to the front of the album here. I think it's called Buttercup. It was the yellow one. Here I'm adding some photo corners that come in the elements. Or it, come, it is an element from the paper collection, I should say. There are, see, I'm, I got a little extra glue, so I was able to just use my glue remover and wipe that off. If you didn't seal the paper and you got glue on a digital paper, it probably would tear the paper. So it really does help from, you know, um, somebody going through the book. It does add a layer of protection. Like I said, it's not, if you were to spill something on it, it's still going to ruin the papers, just like it would a regular paper pack. But by spraying it, it's going to help protect that. So I, my... I wanted to even out my um, mini album. That's why you saw me add some chipboard to the side just to make sure it was even. So when those Nouveau drops dried, they leveled out perfectly. So now I'm just pulling out some of the gorgeous wild orchid craft flowers. These are some larger flowers. I believe these are the 40 millimeter. And this yellow was just, per it went perfect with the collection. And I'm not a real yellow person. I don't use yellow very often. So I wanted to take advantage of the yellow that's in this paper collection because it's so pretty and use some of those flowers that I have in my stash. So again, using Fabri-Tac, I'm going to adhere that down. And for all my flowers, at this point, my hot glue is ready to go. I like using hot glue, it's quick. It really holds it on well and it dries right away. So at this point, I'm just going to continue to embellish the front of my cover using the gorgeous Wild Orchid Craft products. I will have them listed below in the description box. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. And thanks so much for stopping. I hope you've enjoyed today's project. Thanks for stopping by.